Everybody knows there's three parts to a meeting, right? Before, during, and after. There's three parts um, to us coming into a relationship with God. There's three parts to our lives in recovery. Past, the present, and the future. Who we were, where we are, and the direction that we are going in. And this morning we're going to look at Titus 2, 11 through 14, as we read in our responsive reading. And the scripture in which we just heard from Damien, which is Titus chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. As I just mentioned, our meeting God requires that we take a look at, of course, our past. We need to see where we are today, and we need to make sure of where we want to go in the future. The direction that we want to take. Well, for us, it's not hard for us to remember our past. And I wrote to some extent, but I think for a good bit of, of uh, what we're looking at, especially early in recovery, we need to be able to look at it, honestly. Sometimes there's things that we try to push down that we don't want to deal with. But we need to deal with those things. And it's what we call keeping it green. So we don't forget where we came from. But just remember, it's where we came from. We need to move forward. In order to do so, we need to work on it what we're working on today. So we're going to look to God's Word, but before we do, we're going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for your presence here with us this morning. I pray, Lord, that we put out of our hearts and our minds anything that will get in the way of us hearing clearly the message that you have for us this morning. We need your help. You have brought us here. Help us, Father, this morning to hear, to own, and to make a commitment this day that we will make the changes that you speak to us to about this morning. Father, I pray, Lord, that this is, this is important information for us. This is your work. You've given it to us for a reason. So I pray, Lord, that you speak to us. I thank you again, Father, for the presence of the Holy Spirit, who also guides us, that prompts us, and that convicts us of our sins, so that we might see them for what they are. So I pray, Father, that as we are led this morning, by not only your written word, but by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord, that we are open and honest with ourselves so that we might accept that information. Give us the courage that we're going to need to apply it to our lives. Speak to me, Father, the word that you would have me to say. Help us to know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our past does not have to be a life sentence. Sometimes we look at it as it is. We also use it as an excuse to continue in behaviors that we know are wrong for us behaviors that are wrong in God's eyes, behaviors that God would not us, not have us continue in. And I know it's a touchy subject when we talk about once an addict, always an addict, or once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. And I will tell you this, I won't get into the whole disease concept, I don't, but I believe for whatever reason, the reason why we sit here this morning is because we're wired a certain way. For some reason, 
we seem to become obsessed with things, especially when we start putting a substance in our body that makes us feel a certain way. We become obsessed about making sure that we continue to put that substance into our body. And I believe, because I know it is true, that even after we've come into a relationship with God, when I got on my knees and accepted Christ into my heart as my personal Savior, there were still behaviors that called to me that I wanted to act out on, but I chose not to, and it was hard. There was also behaviors like my cigarettes and my language that I got on my knees and I laid the cigarettes down and I asked God to take them from me and I asked God to take my language because every other word was a curse word and I didn't want to curse like that anymore. And as I shared this morning, I've never cursed out of my mouth. I mean, they pop in my head. And I've never smoked since. So there's certain things that God will remove from us as he sees fit. However, some of the things we're going to need to work on. And getting back to the topic here, when people would ask me, why do you drink so much? Why are you always wasting? Well, the easy answer would well, be, I'm an alcoholic. What do you expect? Right? But what happens when we get clean? What happens when we stop drinking? And people ask us, how come you're still, how come you're this? How come you do that? Is that our answer? Because I'm an alcoholic? Do we continue to use that excuse even after we've stopped putting a substance into our body? So I get a little concerned <coughs> when people say, well, I'm this way because I'm an alcoholic even after we've stopped drinking. Or I'm this way because I'm an addict. Even after we've stopped using. We can't use excuses to still actively participate in things that we know are wrong in God's eyes. We have to be honest with ourselves and see them for what they are. Yes, we all have uh, addictive behaviors. And trust me, I know, as I mentioned earlier, we're wired a certain way. But we're not unique in this, see? Because every person breathing has something, a vice, something that pulls them. Our thing is we want what we want. We all have, it seems, compulsive behaviors. And we all want what we want now, right away. But remember, we're not completely unique in this. <coughs> the thing I want us to look at this morning, again, we're looking at three parts of us meeting God. So we want to look at our past, our present, and our future. So the problem and, and, and what's most important is that we don't use our past to justify our present. Because if we want to go in the right direction for a good future, it's not going to work. Amen. We have to deal with our past, be honest with ourselves and make the changes that need to be made. Again, using that once an addict, always an addict, or once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic can be a cop out. It can be a cop out. But I think, and I wrote up there, because we don't want to change. I think we want to change, but we just have those reservations in the back of our head that we like to hold on to. See, Christ died so that we can die of that old self. We need to change from that old 
himself and become the men that God created us to be. Titus 2, 11 through 14. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. <coughs> and we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. While we look forward with hope to what, the, what, what that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds, to doing good, to becoming good, right? Is that what we kind of, you know, I just want to feel okay. I just want to be okay. I want to feel good. I read the serenity prayer but I have no idea what that's like. I want to know what serenity is. I want to know what it's like to have peace in my life. I want to know joy. It tells me here. That by putting behind us our old sinful natures, we might know that joy. Let me read for you. know the serenity prayer, right? God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Well, there's two things in there that we need in order to know the first, which is wisdom and courage, strength in God, relying on Him so that we might know what peace is. Some of us may have come to the conclusion that we just can't change. But if we are willing to place our life in God's hands, there is always hope for positive change and a bright future. The Apostle Paul wrote, Now may, may the God of peace make you holy in every way and make your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless, be kept blameless, until our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen, for he who calls you is faithful. To keep you blameless while we're still <coughs> breathing with the temptations that are in our face. Again, we have to work on certain things. But I believe with all my heart, because I know it in my life that God in His wisdom and His strength, when we in our faith in Him ask Him to remove something from our lives when He sees fit, we'll do so. I don't curse. I don't smoke. I still have to deal with a lot of other things. Though. But never put God in a box. Never limit for the grace of God has been revealed bringing salvation to all people all people and we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinfulness and, to, and sinful pleasure we should live in this evil world with wisdom righteousness and devotion to God while we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ will be revealed. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us and to make us his very own people totally committed to doing good deeds. It says here, God has promised us a wonderful future. In the present, he can help keep us from constantly falling into sin if we call on him. Our willingness to let go of things we cannot change in our past will free us to make positive changes for a healthy future. So, 
We should keep it green. We should remember the things of our past, but we can't beat ourselves over the head about them. We have to deal with them. If we push them down, they stay there. If we open up and are honest with ourselves before God and man and purge them from within, we can move on. Our willingness to let go of the things we cannot change in our past will free us to make positive changes for our future. Positive changes so that you never have to come back here unless you're here for a visit. Right? No matter how ter terrible our past has been, we can make changes for the better in our mind, body, and spirit. Good information. Our past is our past. <clears throat> we have a great promise for our future. But the most important thing that we look at is our today. You ever notice that I always, well not always, but a lot of times I thank God for my for the breath that I take just now, for the moment that I have just now, because I see every moment of my life, every breath that I take as an opportunity to draw closer <coughs> to God, to my Creator. So in my mind, and I believe this is true, today is the most important part. So you have the before, during, and after. But today is the most important part of our lives. What we do with today. Unless we work on our today, and I have it underlined because it's important, unless we work on our today, our future will be just like our past. Nothing will change. Nothing changes. Today, we need to do what's necessary for us to grow. Maintain, come into first, and maintain our relationship with God and share it with others. <clears throat> Titus. This is actually 3, 1 through 8. I don't know why it still says 2, 11 through 14. But I'll read it here from the screen because it's bigger and easier. <clears throat> Remind the believers to submit. This is a strange portion of scripture here, this first verse. I know everybody scratches their head. Yes. Submit to the government and its officers. <sighs> they should be obedient, always ready to do what is good. They must not, here's important stuff, they must not slander anyone and must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show true humility to everyone. Once we too, hopefully that once we too, and you can say that and you're not still, I still am foolish. I once we too were foolish and disobedient and were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. That's important. Our lives were full of evil and envy, and we hated each other. But, I always like the but, when God our Savior revealed His kindness and love, He saved us. Not because of the righteous things that we had done, but because of His mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Christ Jesus our Savior. Because of His grace, He made us right in His sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to insist it assist on these teachings so that all who trust in God will devote themselves 
to doing good. These teachings are good and beneficial to everyone. Amen? Amen. Everyone. The whosoever that will, right, may be saved. That the whosoever that believeth in him will be saved. saves us not because of the righteous things we have done. Because we definitely, when we're in an act of addiction, let alone when we're still self-willed, actively participating in things that we know are wrong in God's eyes. If you want to know, at least this is the way I've always read it, and it helps me to put a better picture on it, where it says righteous not because of the righteous things that we have done the world sees righteous most of the self-righteousness I see righteous as being right in God's eyes righteous is right being right in God's eyes and we're all we're not always going to be there are we we all fall short of God's glorious ideal. Do we not? Amen. We still have temptation that stares us in the face every day. While you sit here this morning, there may have been thoughts in your head that called to you outside of this place or that are just even outside of God's will for your life. We can overcome. We can overcome. I want to read one more thing for you before we finish here. I don't know where it now is going to stick. This page is going to stick. Now I've got a piece of candy on it. I'm not good. Better leave this in here. Oh, because it was on there. Candy on the podium. Not good. Alright. So, the title of what I want to read is Never Forget. And I know we're early in recovering the majority of you, but I want to read this. And it's step 12. Having had a spiritual wake of awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and practice these principles in all of our affairs. And I will say this, having had a spiritual awakening as, <clears throat> after God, you know, maybe kicked me in the butt and I cried out to Him and made a decision that I'm going to start to follow His will for my life, and I start actively participating in a relationship with Him, <coughs> spending time with Him in prayer and meditation. <clears throat> I try to practice that in all I do. As we get further along in recovery, we remember how bad our life really was. We may begin to fade. Do we vividly remember what we once were? Can we humbly recall the dark emotions that filled our soul? Do we have true compassion and genuine sympathy for those whom we try to carry the message? When we take the message of recovery to others, we must never forget where we came from and how we got where we are. Paul told Titus, once we too were foolish and disobedient, we were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. But, again, but, when God our Savior revealed His kindness and love, He saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. As we share our message, let us never forget the following truths. And let me say this. As we live our lives, let, me, let us never forget the following truths. We once were a slave, just as others are today. Our heart was filled with confusion and painful emotions that others still feel. We are saved because of love and kindness of God, not because we were good enough 
We must always remember that we can stay free because God is with us, upholding us every step of the way. God with us. God for us. For those that have, it's really fresh in your mind. Let me read it this way. <clears throat> we are slaves. And there's others that are slaves just as we are still to our own sinful natures. Our hearts are filled with confusion and painful emotions. But we're not alone because others feel it as well. We are saved. We can be saved from that because of the love and kindness of God. You hear that? Whenever I preach, I include myself. You ever notice that I say we? Because it's still fresh in my mind. I don't forget where I came from. And I know I'm only one stupid decision away from being in a bed upstairs and sitting in the chapel this morning. But if we continue, if we come into a relationship with God, submit ourselves to Him, start to deal with what got me here, but deal with today. I know what my future is. Once an addict, always an addict. Once an alcoholic, always an addict. You can call it what you want. But I know I never need to use again. I never have to put a substance in my body. And neither do you. And it comes through submission of self. Not just changing the substances, but changing who you are through death and resurrection. Through putting the old behind you by accepting Christ and dying on the cross as He died on the cross so that you might become new. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You for these truths. Lord, it's easy for us to remember our past. And for the most part, we have to because we don't want to go back to it. But help us to know, Lord, that by coming into a relationship with you and accepting your plan for our salvation, that we can be forgiven of our sins. That in your eyes, they're behind us. We never have to bring them up again. So I thank you, Lord, for making that possible. Thank you, Father, <laughs> that as you see fit, you will remove, as we come to you in faith and prayer, and submit ourselves to you, you can and will remove things that need to be removed. But for the most part, we will have to work every day on the things that you call us to work on so that we might grow every day. Today, today, there are things today in each person here, in every one of our lives, that we know are wrong in your eyes. We might still actively participate in them, Father, and I pray that we lay them at your feet. Father, you've given us your Son, Christ Jesus, to pay a price so that we might be able to get beyond our past. And as he died on the cross and was resurrected from the dead, and ascended into heaven. He let us know that not only will He be our advocate when we do fall, that He promised and gave us the Holy Spirit who guides us into righteousness, who guides us so that we might be able to maintain a relationship with You, to be right in Your eyes. And I thank You, Lord, for that. And I pray, Father, this morning that as we think of those things as we deal with our today I pray Lord that we have the courage and the strength to commit this day never to act out again to make the changes that we need to make thank you Father thank you Father for pointing them out Thank you, Lord, for taking them. Thank you, 
Father, for helping us deal with our today because we never want to come back here. Help us, Lord, to want nothing more than you so that we might seek you in all that we do, be guided, be strengthened, be loved, be cared for. Again, Lord, I pray and I thank you, Father, for the plan of salvation that was given through your Son, Christ Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that each person here know him as, as, as this is truth. And know, Father, in their hearts that this is truth. So that we might come into and maintain this relationship. It all comes down to your love for us. And as you call us, Give us everything that we need each day to make the right decisions so that one day we will be at home with you. Thank you, Father, for caring for us in this way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.